What's up everybody? It's Rob here from the Basement Bike Shop and this video is going to be all about unsealed hubs. Whether you're changing a bent axle, just cleaning and greasing, or you're just adjusting, this video will help you out. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to need to do is remove the wheel from the bike by loosening the axle nuts. Now if you have pegs, you'll need a ratchet with an extension. And if you're running brakes, you'll either have to uh, let some air out of the tire or uh, loosen your brake up to get your wheel off most likely. Now if you're doing a rear wheel, you'll loosen it, slide it forward and take the chain off too. But then after that, you'll have to remove the free wheel, which I demonstrated in my last video. If you'd like to watch that now, you can click on the link on the screen or there'll be a link in the description. So after we get the wheel off and free wheel off, if you're doing the rear wheel, we're going to remove the hardware, axle nut and washer, anything like that. And then all we'll have is our jam nut and our cone nut. We'll need a cone wrench, 13 millimeter for this one, for our cone nut, and then a regular wrench, 15 or 17 usually. And then we'll loosen that and then remove that jam nut. Now the method I'm showing you, you'll only need one cone wrench at a time. I only own one of each size. I realize that I don't need both of them. Here I'm using the wrench to hold the jam nut on the other side that is still jammed against the cone nut. <laughs> to hold the axle. And then I loosen this side. I only ever take off one side at a time and I don't remove the axle until I actually want to because the axle still holds the bearings in place. Now if you're just doing an axle replacement you can take the cone nut we just took off this axle and put it on the new axle and then slide it in at the same time as you slide the other one out. I would actually electrical tape the two together, but this will keep all the bearings in place. And then you don't have to mess with that. You can skip ahead to the end of this video and watch how we put all the hardware back on and adjust it. Or if you feel like, you know, doing a full cleaning and lubing anyway on the bearings, then we'll just keep going. So I just flipped the wheel over. leaving the axle in it to hold the bearings in place. I use my cone wrench and wrench to uh, loosen the other side and then remove the hardware on the other side. Now on your rear you might have different sized cone nut on one side than the other or a, a spacer in between on one side and not on the other. Make sure that goes back in that same way so that it centers your wheel and puts your chain line in the right place. So now that we got that out and our axle is just dangling in there, I'm going to lift it up a little bit on one side so that it holds the bearings on one side and then lets the bearings on the other side out. Then after all the bearings are out on that side, I'm going to pull it the other way. The reason I do it this way is because sometimes there's like a weird lip or cavity in the center of hubs. And when my bearings get stuck in there, they're just a pain to get back out. <laughs> like dropping a nipple in a double walled rim. Okay, once we got all the bearings out, we're going to degrease them, clean them all up, and then we're going to clean up the hub and check the race for any pitting, uh, a lot of wear, make sure that it's still in good shape. Make sure all the bearings are still round. And then we're going to put grease in. Now usually I use a thicker grease in my hubs like I do in my crank. 
and I use a thinner grease in my headset. But this is my old BFR and I don't ride it so I'm just doing it so that you can see because my thicker grease is real dark and you wouldn't be able to see the bearings. Then I drop enough of them in there, move them around a little bit to get them into place. Put one race on, which is what you do if you're changing the axle. Put that one race nut on and then as the other old one comes out, you'd slide the new one in at the same time. Like I said, you can electrical tape them together. It'll go real nice. But having the axle in there prevents the bearings from falling into the center. Put my seal back in. And now what I want to do is center the axle. Now if you have a spacer that goes in between your jam nut and your cone nut, you want to put that in there too and make sure that the same amount of axle is sticking out so that when you put your jam nuts on, you still have the same amount of axle sticking out. And then what I do is I put one side on and I'll lock it down with my cone wrench and my regular wrench. This allows me to only need one cone wrench to do this. Then when I flip it over, and I put this jam nut on, I can adjust it by putting the cone wrench on this side and my wrench for my jam nut on the other side to adjust tension if I need to do that. And then once I get it snug to where I want it, I lock it down. And you might find that you have to uh, have it a little bit loose and then lock it down for it to be perfect. You might have to have it a little bit tight and then lock it down for it to be perfect. You just check it afterwards. And then reinstall the wheel. If you did a rear wheel, you can refer to that free wheel video that I last released. It will show you how to reinstall the free wheel and to reinstall the wheel and set your chain tension. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, you can leave a comment below or you can send me an email. My next video will be on the one piece crank. Whether you're, you're lubing it, adjusting it, changing it, changing to a three piece, changing your sprocket, this video will help you. If you don't want to miss it, subscribe, turn on those alerts, and you'll be notified as soon as it drops. Thanks for watching.